actually has Pagnal here. Who else do we have? Let's see. I'm just going to go to my gallery view. Ayan is here. Freya is here. Thank you so much, everyone, for starting your videos. It's so nice that, you know, we can see each other and talk because otherwise we're just looking at a black screen. And uh, when anyone from the side, they come and look at me talking, they think I'm crazy because I'm talking to a black wall over here. But uh, now that I can see each one of you, thank you so much for uh, uh, for joining in. It's a Friday evening and we're so happy that you, you chose to celebrate and chose to uh, spend your Friday evening with us today. We're trying to, we're, we're going to be making the session as informative as possible, as um, essential as possible when it comes to you knowing more about the strategic design management program and uh, uh, that as a career as well. Um, today, we have a very, very interesting lineup. Like all our dialogues on design sessions where we talk about each program, we have representation from academia, we have representation from your peers, which is your student community, and we have representation from the industry as well. Now, each of these three power lifters are, I think, um, I would say they're the best in terms of what, uh, what you can get in this one hour session because they have a ton of experience. They have a ton of uh, stories to share with you all and a ton of uh, you know, perspectives to share as well. So I think this is the time you make the most of the session today. We're gonna to divide the session into three or four different parts. Okay, the first part is that I'm gonna take you through uh, very, very briefly, what is the is, how, uh, what is the institution all about? The second will be where we talk to an industry guest. We'll be introducing her as well. She's on this panel and I'm, I'm very, very excited to hear her speak. Post which we will be getting to our academia representation where we know more about the program that is offered at ASB, followed by a student perspective as well. So we have some students that we've lined up for y'all who will tell y'all about uh, their experience in the program, what they like, what they didn't like, and how you can cater and um, personalize and customize your academic journey at ISB and uh, at any other uh, uh, institute as well, if in case you choose to do strategic design management. So I'm quickly going to share my screen so that you can see a quick presentation. I will have to just put this on full screen. And there it is. So we welcome you to, of course, Dialogues and Design. We've had five different sessions in the past regarding the different specializations that we offer. This one is for strategic design management. But what is ISD, right? We're, we're a design school situated in Mumbai. We're in curricular collaboration with Parsons uh, which is based in New York. Now, Parsons is world number one when it comes to design education in the US and of course, top three in the world as well. And uh, now that we're situated in Bombay, we share their curriculum, we share their expertise in terms of faculty experience, we share their, um, uh, the, their teaching methodologies. So everything that they do in New York, we do in Mumbai, but of course the curriculum is a little more contextualized to the Indian market so that um, you're learning global standards as well as Indian practices. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, like uh, I'd like to say. And of course, famous alumni that you already know from Parsons. Uh, we have students who have worked over there. We have students who have interned with these people. We have students who have gone ahead and uh, spent their academic journey with uh, alumni from Parsons. And of course, they're at the, top, at the top of their game when it comes to um, uh, work. And of course, the partnership ensures academic certifications, student transfers, faculty development, everything that you'd want in your academic journey, we have to offer through our Parsons collaboration. So we're very, very happy. I'm not gonna to take too much time, like I promised. We're very happy to see you join the ISD family. But um, before I move to the next guest, I'd like to introduce her. She is Ms. Saloni Jha. She works at Microsoft India. She has experience of working at Tata uh, Consultancy Services as well. And uh, the reason we, uh, we reached out to Ms. Jha is because she has a ton of experience when it comes to strategic design management. And why should you hear from anyone else but a master in strategic design management, right? And not just master in terms of the academic part, but of course, she is a master in strategic design management, but also when it comes to experience and perspectives, right? why not hear from her as well and uh, understand her journey too. So can we please have her on spotlight and get her on the panel? Thank you so much, Fish. That was a very uh, beautiful introduction. 
but I I just want to apologize first before I start that I am having the best of luck today and my internet has crashed at the last minute. So everybody who has joined today, my apologies in advance. And I have a very beautiful setup, which was not planned for today, but it is my makeshift uh, setup. So I'm going to put my video off and try to share my screen. So everybody, hi, and I will try to turn my video on towards the end because all because of the bandwidth issue. So, um, yeah, just give me a minute and just tell me if you're able to see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen, ma'am. Okay, cool. All right. All right. So I hope I'm audible and you can see my screen. Just give me a thumbs up, one of you, so that I can start. All right, cool. Thanks, Arthi. So first of all, welcome everyone, whoever is here in the session. I know uh, this, you might have a lot of questions about around strategic design management and why are we here and what is this course about? There might be so much of doubts or enigma or you know what do they actually do you know what do you, what do these people really do because we might not have products that we can pinpoint and say look that is the product i built or 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 look this is this is this is what you can take home with you but what i want to say is that is the beauty of stm that you can look at it from not from say one product or experience perspective, but you can look at the entire spectrum and say that you've been able to impact the entire journey of it. So I will uh, straight away dive into this little presentation that I have put for you guys, and hopefully it will help you understand this course better. And uh, if not, then I'm ready to take up as many questions as you want to throw towards me and Shamit and everybody who is there on the call today. Okay, so let's get, oh, yes, this is done. Thank you, Krish, for this. Uh, now, before I start my presentation, one of the things that I wanted you to know is, oh, one second. Sorry. Yeah. One of the things I wanted you to know is that in my journey of exploring and experimenting with design, whether it is strategic design or in any format that I have explored design, I have understood that it is all about the art of narrating, the all about the art of building narratives and the ability to tell a story. Now, it could be a story about a pe person or a, or a set of people. It could be a story about a process. It could be a story about data, information, science, you name it. But if you don't have a compelling story around it, if you don't have a very observant narrative around it, you're not going to do justice to it. So in my multiple experiences with design thinking or doing, this is the one thread that has stayed with me. And this is what I want to kind of simplify for you guys today and show you with some examples, maybe that would be helpful for you. Now, in my journey, which hasn't been very long, but around learning and practicing about a decade now, uh, uh, you know, involves that how have I implied the education of design and how have I, have I translated in every real life scenario that have come my way. Now, whether it could be like a business scenario at work or it could be a social scenario, it could also be an academic scenario, wherever, you know. So I have experimented with design in multiple ways, be it something like a service design, innovation workshops, design academia, which I love coming to ISD multiple times and taking student projects and conducting classroom uh, workshops with them, or whether it is about working with government closely to influence a policy design, or, you know, in fact, being a design advocate and being a design activist and looking at things, what's going on in the design arena and influencing and impacting that. So in short, all of this is possible because if you don't the heart of a strategic designer, you are broadening your skill set you are broadening your perspective of design and you're also broadening your learning from the different fields and people and information that you are exposing yourself to. So going ahead, 
I just want you to understand this, like, say individual, a set of people, society, nation, world, galaxy, you know, think of that, like from you to the everything outside of you till the eternity, whatever that galaxy is. If you look at any of these units, any of these entities, there are something which is common, which is needs, beliefs, goals, aspirations. Everybody is striving to find a purpose, whether it is known, whether it is unknown, it doesn't matter. That is where we all are striving towards. So if I have to try, you know, I can only try to put strategy or design or strategic design in one slide, which would be very ambitious and audacious because it's, it is so vast and it is so much of exploration that you can do here. But based on my uh, learnings and experimenting, I can say that it is all about the art and science of discovering. That is all what strategic design offers you. Now, you can choose what do you want to discover, what methodology you want to bring in, uh, what are the what is the area that you want to work in. That is all up to you. You can contextualize your entire course, what you want it to be. But the beauty of this course or the beauty of this is that it opens up your thought process. It makes you uh, to learn how to observe, to learn how to think, to learn how to reflect and introspect. And all that gives you that powerhouse of you know, tools and processes and methods that I feel makes you, uh, makes you a very strong contender of uh, propagating design in unheard, uncharted fields. You know, you can take it to anywhere. Uh, depends on a very, very known setup of a design studio to something even to uh, maybe NASA where they are redesigning how a space cockpit should look like, you know? So like I said, uh, the, it starts from an individual and the scope of strategy design is, strategic design is that it can go up all the way to exploring this galaxy or this universe. So this was like in nutshell, if I had to explain you what strategic design is, but I'm sure others will do a much better job after me of, you know, putting their thoughts forward. Now, I want you to quickly take you back to six years when I first got introduced of strategic design. And I wish I, 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 I knew about it way, way earlier in my life. But yes, good things do come. So in my college, I understood when I was taking this course, I learned a lot about what is human-centered design, service design, what, is, what does it mean by cognition, what is sense, what is, you know, a lot of things. You had, you know, we had different people come in and share their perspective perspective and uh, you know it, it was a very enriching experience of course and all that you're going to get when you when you come into this college and you learn about it because yes those are you know a part of a very very integral part of this course and you'll know about it a lot more you know but I want you to understand that if you want to you know trickle it down and say that what are those two three things that matters a lot about this course and why this course is different is about that you learn to know about people, you learn to know about the processes that are there around people, whether people at home, whether people at work, whether people at any, any, any place in the world. And they are always backed by information, data. So if you're being observant enough, you, get, you can look at all these three elements of people, process, and data, and you can have very innovative, and very, very new ideas or explorations coming out of this three very important and strong combination of people, process, and data. So if you ask me that what is one um, skill that a strategic designer should build or should have is about being mindful, observant, and always keen to look at people, process, and the data and all the information that is flowing around it, okay? So that is my one of 
of my biggest takeaway from my college days. Now, of course, <laughs> I want to share with you one of my first classroom projects, which is way, way back, okay, of how I learned to understand people, process, and data. And why I'm sharing this and, and, and a little less about my work project is because maybe this would resonate more with you. So when, when we started, we also didn't know a lot about what is the strategic design management? What are we actually going to do at the end of it? Do we build something? Do we, uh, do we create something? Do we need a lab space? Where do we go? So we were all given that you look at and identify an unorganized business and you employ your design management tool for driving the solution. So I went out to one of the potters who had like a very high skill known for his art and skill from the last 35 years practicing a family owned very unorganized business and i started to understand his business and i realized that in the process of understanding his business i need to understand him first what are his needs what are his beliefs what are his goals what are his aspirations for his business and is it the same for his family as well, right? Is the family, because it's a family business, right? So is, is the future of his business also thinking in the same line? Or, you know, or what are they thinking? So then it, it wasn't just about the Potter and his business. It became Potter, his immediate circle, which is his family, then his business business and in his business his clients vendors peers competitors everybody came into the picture and that's when we realized that when we talk about any individual entity it's not just about that individual entity it is always surrounded by multiple factors multiple parameters so that is what when you observe and uh, understand people and processes, when you start probing and when you start playing the data, you realize that the universe around you is so layered and you, you find the beauty in it and you start loving the complexities that it throws your way, right? And then when you come up with some sort some, you know, you, I mean, I'm not saying this is the best idea out there, or I'm not saying that this was the best that I could do at that time. But all I'm saying is that it comes from a point of information. It comes from a point of fact. It comes from a point of data, which, which gives you the confidence to say that why this is important or why this is bringing value or why this will impact and change this person's life. As a designer, I think that is the point where you you feel most empowered uh, and you and you see that your efforts are making good you know and your efforts are making a positive impact in someone's life right so i remember when we did this project at the end of this of course we went understood his business and i realized that there were multiple solution directions but one of the directions was to contextualize his products so for example he was making sigri which is a, a traditional chula but the, the scope was that he could also make portable barbecue pots. And we did that and we experimented and we saw that his revenue go up. So now anyways, that particular insight came up with a lot of spending a lot of time with him, understanding his business, his skills and everything. But when I went back and we used to maintain a journal at that point of time, and I wrote this sentence and I just wanted to bring that up here is I told myself that I want being mindful of the change or idea that I propose, that people and their needs are central to every design decision I will ever make. This was my top learning from this project. And I have gone back to this after a long many years. Thank you, Shamit, for asking me to bring this up. Because when I went back to my journal, I read this sentence and I stood, and I realized that this has been my quest in my exploration with strategic design all through these years, right from my first classroom project to what I did later in my professional life. And I will provide you a brief snippet of that also. Uh, from there, I moved on to uh, do my first job at Tata Consultancy Services, and I was working on a foundation initiative, which was called as Digital Impact Square. You can look it up online. And, and uh, my first project was super exciting. And I think as a designer, this has been my most uh, rewarding and um, I think uh, the, the best project so far for me. It is because I was able to translate what I learned as a strategic design to bring 
into life a project that was starting from scratch. So basically, Digital Impact Square is an innovation forum where uh, you know we used to incubate social entrepreneurship and we would welcome students like you to come and innovate with us and work on very complex social challenges and i'm happy to say that is where i i started my academic partnership with isd and i'm very proud to say that we had multiple students from isd who have worked on various of these projects and i'm very proud of mentoring them and some of these projects are flying by so, uh, so, uh, so yeah, so my basic job there was to, like I said, because we started from scratch, is to set up the entire process. How would the projects run? What kind of projects we are choosing? What kind of people we are choosing? All those things. And then once we have that set up, uh, guide the pro guide the team in terms of, uh, you know, researching deep down, then, you know, formulating ideas, then testing testing those ideas, building those products, taking it to the market, everything, you know, the entire drill. We were very closely uh, working with each team. And then, of course, one of the job was to see if the innovation that we are working on is going in the right direction or not. But I think one of the best jobs that I was doing at work was my ability to influence and impact young innovators, to make them see the power of design. That if you are able to be empathetic, if you're able to be observant, there is no problem in this world which cannot be, you know, at least an attempt can be made to kind of try to solve them. So this was one of my, I think, most rewarding thing that I, I got from this project. So after working for almost four years in this in this project, I moved on to kind of look at uh, business challenges, you know, and find again challenge myself and see that how as a strategic designer can I make an impact in a very fast and uh, you know profit and um, uh, you know revenue driven world, which is uh, which is the product environment or the corporate environment we work in. So I joined Microsoft and here I joined as a design researcher, uh, but I realized that the thread of my work remains same, you know, whether I work for a solution that is related to a social entrepreneurship or for a product or a solution that is related to commercial world. I am still understanding people, their processes and tools. I am still probing deeper for user needs, understanding their goals, beliefs, aspirations. You remember that slide? And I am using all this to inform design directions. And I could not, I cannot present a lot of my work that I do in Microsoft, but I can take questions about it later. Uh, but I can share something which we have just, uh, which we have done in the last 11 months while we were all working from home, and it is called the future of work. Uh, you can look it up online. We have a report and everything um, uh, shared for it, and I'm very proud to uh, share this because we have been uh, researching on the Microsoft employees worldwide and understanding how their work of remote work work of experience has been and what are their ups and downs in it and how has the human behavior changed what is the data pointing towards us uh, or you know uh, whether you know people in asia versus whether people in europe what are their unique needs what are their unique pain points you know uh, so this has been a very very insightful study for me because we would have imagined that everybody is okay you know taking it in their pajamas sitting in their living rooms and just logging in and taking the you know taking the work right that, that would be like an idea of you know how work from home looks like but when we you know delved deeper we realized that there is so many factors you know not just like that in that particular person but again the, the, it's it's all strategic, right? You you cannot just look at one unit and decide. There are multiple things which are affecting it. So, all I'm trying to say is that once you get exposed to this way of thinking, once you learn to observe, once you know that there is an entire universe out there which is layered, and you learn the art to traverse it you know the science behind it, and you love to play with the information that is thrown around you, then you can kind of practice it, whether 
in any way of life. So whether it is your personal project at home, whether it is your classroom project, whether it is something you're doing professionally, it really doesn't matter because you have learned the way to think, you've learned the way to observe, and you've learned the pre uh, way to introspect, synthesize, and rationalize things. So, um, with that, I will not take a lot of time. And uh, that's all about me. You can drop me a hello at this Gmail and or you can also drop me a hello at Instagram, whatever works for you, for your generation. Uh, I generally love to hear from students and uh, always almost respond. So, uh, so feel free. And if there is any more questions that you have, please, please, please ask me in the question and answer rounds. I would love to answer that. Thank you so much, Saloni. This was so insightful. Um, after seeing your presentation, I feel that I should apply for a job at Microsoft for a strategic design manager. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, oh, we are looking. We are hiring, by the way. I think I think you first need to do a four-year program with us, and then you will apply. <laughs> speaking <laughs> speaking of yeah. which. Speaking of which, that's the next segment that we get on to, to know how you can work at Microsoft India and be a peer with Saloni. Uh, I'd like to invite our program, uh, let me get the slide, let me just open it up and show it to y'all who we're getting on, uh, on the panel right now. And yes, there we have it. I think Abhi Desa is gonna be displaying it right now. Uh, but the, the person who we have next, uh, he handles everything that we have for strategic design management at ISTE. He's Professor Shamit Srivastava. He's gonna come on the spotlight now. He is the program director for the School of Product Innovation and Strategic Design. And um, to everyone who wants to know how to do what, Sona what Saloni does, all your questions will be directed to Shamit sir. So please, uh, Shamit sir, can we have you on spotlight so you can give us a whole blueprint of how to get the job of our dreams. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Krish. And uh, uh, I would, First, like to say that Saloni, it's always a pleasure to hear you. Uh, you know, you you mentioned about uh, you know the feeling of belongingness. The you know you mentioned about finding the right purpose. Uh, I think uh, every time we have interacted, you know, there's been so much of I would say uh, uh, so much of constructive discussions around around what SDM is and where SDM should go. So people out here, you know, we Saloni and I have not just interacted. So we we know each other for I think more than a decade now. Uh, when she was a student and I was in the industry, uh, that's that's how long we we go back. Uh, every time we meet, we talk about you know how strategic design and what's the future of strategic design and how it can create impact, right? So according to me, strategic design is all about how can you bring in an impact, impact in business, impact in people's lives, impact in the environment. So you know that's what uh, it is all about. And I'm going to give you, I think Saloni set the context very well, uh, you know a really big picture about what SDM is. But I'm going to, you know, bring you now down uh, to Lower Parel and what actually happens there. Some of my students who are smiling here are also with me to help me, you know, talk, uh, walk me through my, through their experiences at uh, ISD and SDM program. Okay, so uh, yeah, slides. Uh, you know, unfortunately, that's still the best way to do it. But uh, I really look forward to some of you joining in and maybe coming up with innovative ways of, you know, communicating and storytelling. Uh, right, but let's let's move ahead with the with the slides so far. Uh, now, before I progress, okay, let me just simplify what SDM is for you. Okay, if you are a strategist, okay, in simple terms, in simple parallel terms, you are actually a Sherlock Holmes of a company, right? It could be a Sherlock Holmes of a large corporate, it, or you could be a Sherlock at a at a startup or a government institution, or you can be a Sherlock in, in your family business itself. Right, I think this is the best way I could have, you know, I, I think uh, the most, uh, I would say best example I could have, you know, brought to you to explain what SDM is all about. And uh, I'm sure all of you know what Sherlock does, right? And I know, I and I'm sure you all know that what Sherlock does, not many people can do it, right? So that is exactly what, you know, strategists do. They, they connect the dots, they figure out what makes sense, you know, what, what makes a good meaning, and they help the company figure out uh, what the company can do in the future. Okay, uh, let's go a little more deeper. Now, I, I think the slide that I've built uh, out here, one question 
you know if you ask a fashion designer what does a fashion designer do i'm sure people are going to say that a fashion designer designs apparels and accessories product designers design chairs and gadgets and automobiles uh, but uh, the answer to the question what does a strategic designer do right i think there has to be an answer to that so i think this slide talks about that right so we are the people who design businesses we are the people who design experiences we are the people who design services i think uh, saloni did mention about that as well and we are also the people who design entrepreneurs right so if there are there are some of you who have uh, you know who at some point of time you know want to start your own businesses right maybe this could be a way to look at you now or if there if there are some people some of you out here who want to go in a company and figure out you want to go and work in tesla and figure out what should tesla do now right they they bring they are bringing electric cars they are traveling to space uh, what is the next that the tesla can do right or you go to a local company and figure out that how can they go and compete with tesla right so essentially strategic designers are people who ask the right questions right there because it's asking a right question is also an art not everyone can ask the right question right and if you don't ask the right questions you probably are not discovering the right answers right so we are the people who ask the right questions difficult questions right which not every business leaders can answer and we are also the people who get answers to that questions right so that is essentially what strategic designers are so what is a you know what kind of mindset right how do strategic designers think right so strategic design is a culmination of you know left brain and right brain right most creative most creative uh, disciplines are more about right brain as you know that right brain is the creative side right and the left brain is the analytical side but i think strategic design is one discipline which sits somewhere at the center i would still say it's more creative but you know you cannot leave the analytical part out of it right so um, i know there are people who are looking at that oh my god there is math here you know let me just walk out of this you know uh, session now uh, but don't worry you know we'll we'll make it easy for you uh, there is not so much of math and i think pragya sakshi and even freya out here uh, they will help you simplify that uh, but math is important a little bit of math is important and we'll we'll understand why so what do you learn you know once you come in i think i am going to leave this slide because i also find this slide too jargonish uh, okay so i am i think i'll move a little further so this is these are the kind of courses that you usually study uh, when you come to uh, so when you take strategic design management as your specialization after you finish your first year right so if you are looking at the slide everything that you see in a light blue color font okay are the courses which are related to let's say business or marketing or management right and everything that you are seeing in dark blue color are courses which are more design and creative oriented so this is again connecting back to the right and the left brain theory right blue courses uh, are not many but they are essential right so so if you if i have to tell you in in a in an equation form strategic design management right is uh, maybe about 3/4 of design and 1/4 of management okay i can probably put that uh, you know in an in an equation right uh, saloni also mentioned about some of the courses right so service design uh, information visualization the chart you know that microsoft report that saloni uh, showed you right it had some concentric circles right uh, you know it requires thinking it requires research right it requires visualization you know someone should be able to simplify all the research that has happened and put it across in a simple way so that people can read it right and uh, uh, so that is what information visualization is all about digital marketing ui ux uh, so one best part about sdm is it has a little bit of everything there is communication design in it there is ui ux in it there is a little bit of product design in it there is a there is experience design right so it actually intersects a lot of other disciplines okay and i think i'll uh talk a little more about it um uh, i think our faculty pool is really big uh, i don't think i could have accommodated everyone here uh, saloni is also the one probably who's who's you know who's uh, taught us in the previous years and uh, so as you see uh, you know what is essential here is the faculty team out here you know is a mix of people who have got academic ex you know experience right really strong academic experience who have been into academics for long and also industry right and that is you know that is uh, you know that is why i think our program has been so successful over the last 3 years right because our uh, we have had faculties from our neighborhood right we have had because we are based out of lower parel we have 
and a lot of corporate offices are based in and around Lower Parel. We have had faculties coming from, you know, Mahindra, Aditya Birla, you know, RBL Bank coming and teaching courses uh, to our students, right? A lot of those visiting professors, right? So, so this is the faculty pool behind uh, all of this. Uh, some lovely smiles out here. And uh, I think we, we see a replica of those also on your screens. So familiar faces, I can see Sakshi with the same smile out here right now. So why did I put this slide? Uh, as Saloni also mentioned, right, that we, we do a lot of research. We do a lot of problem identification. It's very important to understand what is wrong, right? As I said, asking the right question. This picture is Bandra railway station, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, you know, this class out here, Pragya and Sakshi and Priya included, they had gone to Bandra uh, railway station to understand, uh, you know, how do people uh, move, right? The mobility of people in the thing and uh, how do information, uh, you know, boards and signages help them, uh, you know, track their movement, right? Uh, imagine a newcomer on, you know, coming to a Mumbai station, right? How difficult or how is, you know, easy it's going to be for them. So this team was doing a deep dive, was doing an observational study to understand that, you know, how signages uh, are designed at a station. And they came back and they proposed uh, some solutions around that. Uh, you can't live without post-its, right? So uh, I think if you are planning to take strategic design management, you should fall in love with your post-its. Very, very important. Right. Uh, even in a virtual world, uh, you know, there is a very interesting tool called Miro, which our students have started to use. But uh, I think Post-it still have, uh, I think, their own uh, advantage. And uh, Post-its, you know, when you, once you look at Post-it cloud and once you try to draw meaning out of it is when you get that aha moment. Right. So strategic designers don't get an aha moment by looking at a nice prototype. They get an aha moment when they look at the Post-it and say, oh, OK, so this is what you know, is the inside out of it. And let me use this inside to, you know, look at the future. So uh, what you're seeing out here is a creation by Pragya, who's sitting here and watching us right now. So this is an empathy map created by Pragya. And uh, yes, uh, I mean, uh, post-its are good friends. In fact, they are, you know, they are family friends or maybe they are, they are their family, uh, right? So maybe another slide on it. Again, a bunch of our students from the third year, as you see, and yes, uh, we do encourage uh, uh, strategic design students to create a lot of prototypes and mockups. Okay, so don't think that if you are take, if you are strategic design management students, you know probably you'll not be doing a lot of hands-on work. Uh, it is up to you on how you want to convey your ideas. How do you want to uh, put things together? Because what you are creating is not for yourself, right? It's for it's for the audience, and you need to figure out different unique ways to take your concepts to the audience, to communicate your ideas, and to take feedback from them. Design is all about doing those iterations, collecting feedback, coming, improvising, right, going back. So these are again mockups. If you look at the fit and finish of some of these products, I think uh, you know they can they can actually compete with a lot of product design and uh, interior design students, right? So I think uh, our SDM students have done a good job in uh, in skills uh, on prototypes as well. Uh, you know, game design, right? Uh, sometimes your solutions could be in the form of uh, games and gamification has been spoken of a lot. Uh, so this is a project done by a student, Bhavya, who's right now in senior year. Uh, she wanted to teach young students, right, your age group, uh, on, on importance of investment and finance. And I think she thought rather than having a YouTube video or, you know, someone telling you and giving you a boring presentation about what is finance and investments, why not design a board game, right? We've all played Monopoly and, you know, business games and strategy games. So why not use game and take it forward, right? So. These kind of, you know, this kind of thinking is what uh, strategic designers uh, do. Again, a project, uh, classroom project done for Bata. Uh, this was to make the brands of Bata more visible. I'm sure not many people know that Bata in India has got 13 brands and sub brands, uh, right? But unfortunately, it's only Bata, Hush Puppies, uh, right? Uh, you know, some of the brands that you prominently see in a showroom. So how do you make how do you grow business for Bata, right? So you grow business by to Bata by also making the other brands more visible. So Vama Sangvi, who graduated last year, she, you know, took some help from the interior design students. Again, co-creation, collaboration with other disciplines to create, uh, you know, this uh, thing. This was a project done by a live project done by our current senior year students, uh, uh, organic store in Madurai, 
लुकिंग टू इंक्रीज द फुटफॉल्स इन द स्टोर राइट ऑर्गेनिक ऑर्गेनिक बोलते बहुत है लोग हैं बट कितने लोग एक्चुअली फॉलो करते हैं सो हाउ डू यू गेट मोर एंड मोर पीपल टू लिव एन ऑर्गेनिक लाइफ सो दे डिजाइन दॉक थ्रू ऑफ एन ऑफ यू नो ऑफ वन ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिक फार्म्स राइट सो दे हैड अ प्रपोजिशन दैट द पीपल कैन बी टेकन टू द ऑर्गेनिक फार्म सो दैट दे कैन यू नो दे कैन सी एंड दे कैन वॉच एंड देन दे कैन अडॉप्ट द लाइफ we get a lot of students who have interest in fashion but they don't want to design garments okay they they want to look at more business side of fashion right uh, freya shah who you can see right now on your screen was one student who wanted to take fashion communication or fashion design but then when she got to know about strategic designs she was like i don't want to design garments or i don't want to work with fashion uh, in you know more specifically into fashion industry i want to look at uh you know how we can look at sustainable fashion circular economy stuff like that so this is where one of the student collaborated with a fashion design student this fashion design student had created uh you know a special kind of pigment uh, a lot of waste flowers get generated india is a religious country uh, right we use flowers in a lot of puja and you know good occasions in our house but a lot of those flowers get wasted right so can you use that flower can you create a dye out of it and use that dye to create to to uh, you know to paint uh, to color your clothes so this was a project done by fashion design students and uh, strategic design management students were uh, working with these students to figure out how this product now can be taken to market how can you create social media face for the brand and stuff like that right and uh, uh, very very fresh uh, from the oven just two months back uh, this is our new sofa more batch and they were working on tanishk and they were trying to look at tanishk the jewelry brand how can you make uh, you know this brand more visible uh, to audience right how can tanishk grow business and they came up with a very interesting idea right so let's look at this okay let's look at this video i think i forgot to share the sound let me reshare it with the sound just a some two minute i think less than a two minute video here you go to my best friend here's to celebrating one of the most special occasions of your life your first baby make all your first moments special presenting to you the new all your first collection by tanishk right so so you know this was an idea that Uh, that the students from second year strategic design management came up with that you know can there be some new occasions you know that tanish can target their you know brand at because it's not just about wedding right it's not just about engagements and thing like that yes you know jewelry has a lot of importance in our culture and they said you know can there be some first the first moments in our life you know the first baby the first job right so why can't this become a way to gift people so this was a, a small advertisement you know that they created uh, sorry Uh, some more work i think uh, again you know uh, this was a work done by i guess uh, sakshi pragya this batch uh, itself uh, packaging design so you know looking at some of the folk culture uh, looking at some of our traditions and seeing how we can bring this into thing so this was done for i think balaji wafers uh, i'll not talk about this because i know one of my student is going to speak on this now coming to the most important question right uh, i don't know if you all remember the maruti advertisement maruti suzuki advertisement राइट right? कितना देती है फाइनली कितना फ्यूल कितना इकोनॉमी मिलता है मुझे अगर मैं गाड़ी खरीदता हूं तो राइट एंड ऑफ द डे व्हेन यू बाय अ व्हीकल यू लुक एट व्हाट इज द एवरेज आई गेट राइट नाउ हियर द दैट क्वेश्चन इज कि यार ये तो ठीक है यू नो इतना सब प्रोजेक्ट कर लेंगे ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड ऑफ द डे व्हाट इज आवर यू नो व्हाट इज आवर करियर पाथवे राइट व्हाट डू वी गेट आउट ऑफ इट राइट सो देयर आर मल्टीपल करियर पाथवेज एंड आई गेस सलोनी यू नो कैन आल्सो ऐड टू दिस सो यू कैन लुक एट कॉर्पोरेट corporate is you know big mnc's and i don't think you know i can i can put everything out there but corporates hire a lot of strategic designers because they want to innovate they want people who can tell them 5 saal baad 10 saal baad kya karna chahiye right because everyone in the organization is only focusing on the current sales and you know current products and improvising it right so a lot of scope there right uh, design studios and startups a lot of traditional design companies are not diversifying into consulting services innovation consulting right so uh, so that is a great place to be there are lots of design consulting studios in bangalore pune delhi 
uh, Mumbai, right? Uh, so they, you know, that could be places uh, thing. Business consulting, McKinsey, BCG, Deloitte. In fact, I'm very happy to, you know, let you know that this year we have had three placements, three strategic design management students have got placed in Deloitte. Okay, I think uh, I think it's a dream job for a lot of us, right? Uh, so that is a place to be starting your own company. Like I mentioned in the beginning, right? If you if you have a great idea and you think you want to pursue that idea, uh, I think strategic design management will, will put you two or three steps ahead of others, right? With the kind of skills that you gather here. And of course, you know, you can, if, you, if someone of, some of you want to go back to your family businesses and help your parents, I've had some of my alumni doing that. Uh, that is also a, a pathway. Uh, some statistics, I think I'll, uh, I, I think I've already given you a picture. So I think I'll skip this slide. Uh, yes. So you see the placements for this year. This is December news. Uh, so we've got placements in JSW, DesignPod, Dubai, Deloitte, three placements from SDM and Infosys, uh, you see Prachi's name out there. So this is what it's been. We have received some great testimonials from, uh, you know, the, the creators of the program themselves, right? Parsons, they've got a great legacy uh, as a design school and also as a strategic design management uh, program leads. And both Jonki and Mark, uh, they have visited us. They have looked at the work. You can see some pictures of our students presenting them. And uh, they've given really great testimonials uh, for the for the growth uh, and kind of work that's happening here. So I think with that, uh, I would like to close, uh, you know, my session. Happy to take as many questions. Please do follow us on Instagram. As you can see, isd.strategicdesign. And uh, over to you, Krish. Thank you. Thank you so much. And of course, to everyone who has attended this call as well, and to everyone who participated in this call, um, if anything that the students would like to add to this, that is our current students here would like to say something uh, uh, in addition to what Shamit said, what you have already said, and what Saloni Ma has said as well, uh, please feel free to do that. And uh, if not, I will be proceeding to the question and answers uh, round that I'd like to call. So we get a lot of questions in the chat box. We usually address them to um, either our representation from industry representation from academia or to our student community. So based on what the question is, I'll be addressing it to each one of you. Uh, other than every student, every participant on this call, uh, we're encouraging you to post your questions in the chat box so that we can get them answered and uh, uh, we can also address each one, each one of them. Uh, before we move on to that, uh, Krish, uh, students. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, was, I was just going to say that. So. Go on, sir. Go on, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was about to say. I think, I think Pragya and Sakshi have exactly. a few things to share. I guess exactly. they have a few slides, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Go, ahead, go ahead. So the, I was just going to introduce them as well, uh, so that they could come in and can we spotlight the two of them, Pragya and Sakshi? These are our third-year students. Um, they're very well experienced when it comes to being in the academic uh, uh, journey that they're in already, because they've spent three years with us. They know everything about strategic design management. And uh, every every flaw or every good thing, I think it's all it's not going to go past them. So um, let's hear it from the two of them. I think uh, Pragna, you'd like to go first, or would you, or, or would Sakshi like to go first? However, your anything works. I do. So I think I'll go first, and then Sakshi. Can all right, go next. perfect. Yeah. We'll get Pragna to go. I think I'll I'll just take uh, I'll just take few seconds to introduce both of them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I I think I, I I want to do that. So let me. Okay, Pragya, are you going first? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, I think I think let so I think let me tell you this about Pragya. Okay, so first of all, Pragya, um, everything you know that Pragya does has got a sense of completion in it. Okay, she she never leaves anything unturned, right? Sometimes she goes also overboard and she does more than that is required. So that's that's Pragya. Pragya is very comprehensive in her work, very detailed, as I rightly said. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, uh, she she loves reading. I know she keeps. Uh, uh, asking all the professors about some of the books that you know she can read and she's been a great performer uh, ever since uh, you know she's been with us so go ahead Pragya all yours yeah I will just add one yes thing. yes please Saloni uh, because I also had the pleasure yes, of yes. much and I would want to say about Pragya is that she is the quiet one but uh, when when Pragya comes up with something with her work nine hundred out of hundred times you would be surprised 
because there will be something in it which you would have not noticed as a as a faculty it happened to me and she would bring that up and then you go back and do your homework to come and you know uh, you know you know answer her questions so if you are with pragya you have to be super informed which is great. i agree it's all a healthy competition here <laughs> <laughs> yes all of all yours go ahead pragya thank you so much for the like, really kind words i got shout out and um, saloni ma'am it's really nice to see you saloni ma'am after a long time and yeah i'd like to uh, present my screen so um are you guys able to see yeah so hi guys i am pragya i'm a junior year strategic design management student and i'm from chennai so the reason i pursuing stm is because i really like design and in my first year i found out about this thing called stm and i thought i'd like to talk to you a little bit about the same i'm guessing the first question you guys have is what is stm and it is very beautifully covered by both shamit sir and saloni ma'am but i thought i could give you a student perspective of the same to explain stm through an example so i thought that would be a really nice way so i thought the best example to talk about was airbnb i'm guessing a lot of you must have heard about airbnb and what airbnb does and or at least stayed in an airbnb at least once in your life so airbnb is a very nice stm example cuz one of the designers who is the founder of airbnb joe gibbs really believed in stm and design thinking and the way he and the way he incorporated and brought stm into airbnb was he found out the kind of market gap that is there in today's economy about traveling he found out that people wanted a very authentic way to travel he also realized the best way to communicate with people was through technology you know leveraging technology by creating a beautiful interface and also creating a very economically viable business out of it by creating the gap for people who want to give their houses out to stay and also for people who would like to stay so that was a really nice example of stm and there are a couple of more that i'd love to share later as well so what is sdm i think in a little bit of a jargon way sdm is all about design thinking and also about business and management it's a very beautiful interplay of both so if you like business and you like design it's a beautiful a choice to take and something that i really like in sdm is it's very sector agnostic so it's any sector everywhere and throughout my projects that i'd like to share i've worked on a couple of sectors and something that really stuck to me in sdm is about how every problem is an opportunity for design I think it was beautifully mentioned by Saloni Ma'am as well as to how, about how to take design even on a personal level, even on a professional level, and that's something that I like to incorporate in my life too. So I thought, rather than talking a lot about STM, I'd like to show you a project of mine that I had done. So it'll be an easier way to explain. So Packyard was the project that I had done. Uh, I wanted to talk about how the STM projects are. They're basically for 15 weeks, and we follow a design research methodology, and it's divided into three parts of five, five, and five weeks, of uh, following research, then synthesis, and insights, and so on. So the topic that I had chosen was basically excessive packaging, which is causing detrimental impacts on the environment. So I think a lot of you must have noticed. I'm guessing a lot of you must order from Amazon, Flipkart, and Mintra. And every time you get a package, what do you do with all the excess bubble wrap and packaging? You probably throw it in the dustbin, and you're like, you know, I don't know exactly what to do with it. So I thought that was a reason that I wanted to intervene and create a service for the same, where I wanted to tackle the problem of excessive packaging. So I created the service called Packyard. It basically believes in transforming the future sustainably. and it follows this concept of circular economy where nothing at all goes wasted so it either gets reused it gets upcycled or it gets uh, you know the uh, sorry upcycled or it gets reduced so here it's basically that people come and give you your packages usually what you do is that you throw the packages away right into the dustbin but here the intervention is about how you give back the packages to the delivery boys and you get incentives for the same So every time you open the package, you create a new opening system wherein the package can be reused multiple times. And every time it's reused, you get a packet seal. So if you get any package of the packet seal, it's also a sense of consciousness that okay, I'm doing a little bit that I can do to the environment. And like I said, it follows the three R's and it also follows upcycling. And the way we create incentives for people is that we give them discount points or we also give them pack points that I call so people can redeem that. and it's in it could be in collaboration with any uh, e-commerce platform and i also wanted to mention here about the research of packyard that we did was that when i joined stm i was always thinking it would be very um, 
textual and a lot of words and not a lot of visuals and that's something that i broke my own mental model cuz i started exploring into visual design communication design uh, product design and you also make a lot of friends in that wherein you do cross collaboration of design so you learn a lot about what they're doing you try using it in your projects you teach them a lot and that's something that i really learned so my second project is uh, all about makeup and i'm not really of a makeup enthusiast but after doing this project i got really into makeup and i'm guessing a lot of you must be familiar with a lot of brands that are out here so here uh, i wanted to talk about you know a lot of these makeup brands right that you notice can you guys name probably the top 5 makeup brands and the kind of uh, products that they have that was the kind of question that i was um, given with and we try to find a solution for the same so we try to understand the kind of makeup brands that are there in the indian market the kind of prices that they offered the kind of popularity they have and the also kind of products that they have and the kind of you know color diversity that they offer in their foundation range specifically so for those of you who don't know foundation is the kind of product that you use to make up to conceal um, you know your face and to also like smoothen it out So this is the infographic that we finally created. I think Saloni Ma'am showed a very beautiful infographic. So infographics basically condense a lot of the information and put it together in a very simple and easily digestible format. So here we made an infographic of price versus brand, where we took the top five popular brands in the Indian skincare market and placed them against price. We found out that the average price of a good foundation was about six fifty rupees, and we also found out that in each company what are the kind of products that they offered and the size of the circle so bigger the circle more the popular it is so you can notice that how in india we do care about the price and you know the biggest circle which is the most popular is also of a lesser price than that of the others we also try to so you see a lot of these pie like the pie slices that are there in each of these circles each color represents the kind of color diversity that each of the products offers and with this we got an overall understanding about how the indian consumer cares both about the color the price and the brand that's then the indian skin market uh i'd like to almost end my presentation about why stm and at least i wouldn't want to advise you about why to take stm but at least i would like to talk about why i chose stm and how it's helped me out um it's helped me explore a lot it's helped me explore in even traveling and discovering new places talking to a lot of people and even coming out of my comfort zone it's helped me design uh i really like designing which i guess you guys must probably understood that it's helped me be curious ask a lot of questions asking why why stm why design why anything as a matter of fact it's helped me understand people uh including consumers including my own family it's helped me be kind and empathetic so i think um something that's very important for a designer is to understand other people and to be kind and understanding because that's the only way forward it's also helped me to express myself and i think in one of salvani mom's old presentation she said expressing yourself is very important either it's a written format or like the talking or screaming so that helped it's i think it's also helped me make a change in at least the people around me and i think making changes are very important for the kind of world we're living in and lastly it's helped me understand the world of business so uh, i'm very grateful also for like the kind of mentorship i have by shamit sir as well he's allowed me to understand different businesses the kind of transactions how history works uh, the kind of world we're living in why we're living in this kind of world right now so thank you so much for giving me the opportunity for talking about stm i would love to reach out and help you guys if you guys want to talk about stm you guys want to talk about design life in general or anything and thank you for the opportunity and thank you shamit sir also for giving me the opportunity <clears throat> great work yeah thank you that was quite nice i think if i was in the audience i would have definitely <laughs> uh, got inclined towards sdm thank you pragya that was wonderful all right so i think now we have sakshi i think that will be the last presentation of the day uh, and as you can see sakshi right uh, sakshi is the smile of the class right she is actually the smile of the discipline right she she is she is very expressive uh, uh she uh, I, i i think she is also very energetic she brings life to the class uh the one of the great skill that sakshi has that not many people have and i wish a lot of strategists have that skill is she is a great uh, visual notes maker she is very good with her information visualization and notes and maybe uh, at some point you can probably you know check check that out uh her interest lies in art and healthcare and i know that she wants to probably work or do a lot of projects around healthcare and in fact some of them she's already attempted in the class So, Sakshi, uh, over to you, and go ahead. Good evening, uh, everyone. Um, yeah. 
It's so good to see Saloni, ma'am. Firstly, after so long, and thank you so much, Shamit sir, for those words. I mean, I've heard it from you once, but it means a lot. Um, and I think you can vouch for now that you know you've, you've seen my journey as well, so you can vouch for it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit first because I know that I've been like three presentations, and you guys are like, okay, now we got to stop see the screen. Okay, now you need to talk. So I'm just going to give you a little introduction about myself. Um, I'm Sakshi. I'm a junior year strategic design management student, and I take a lot of pride in it. Although um, my journey or my stepping into this course wasn't very planned. Um, I'm not a planner in general as well. Um, so it worked out well. So initially in my foundation year, I tiptoed into every little thing that I could. And when I realized that I'm looking for something that provides me or aids me developing most of my skills, maybe not all, but most, um, I felt strategic design is what I would want to pursue. Um, and hence, today I'm going to showcase one of my projects and going to take you a little bit deeper into what we've done. Um, it's sort of a journey of the entire project. And I'll also show you the solution itself. So you can get an idea about how it actually works. Strategic design management, as I've spoken, um, what about it? Now coming to a definition of a hybrid of design thinking and business strategy, it's taken me about say four semesters to get here. And I'm telling you the definition of strategic design keeps evolving, keeps changing. And it will, it will sort of revolve around your creative as well as analytical skills um, always. That's one thing that's gonna always stay the same. Coming to healthcare, like Sir said, I'm passionate about the healthcare system. Um, and it was one of my service design projects for my semester fourth. Um, so the first step was, what do you mean by healthcare? So in today's time, what healthcare means is the physical, mental, and social well-being of an individual. It's not just how you feel. It's also about everything. And that went into understanding how broad the healthcare system is. So we usually think, yeah, we're going for a consultation. That's about it. You got hospital, you got consultation, you got the laboratory, but it's actually pretty wired. And it ranges from a direct purpose consultation to a service utility that you may need at any point in time. Um, we went on into sort of understanding the evolution of the entire system because it's, it's one of the industries that is evolving every minute, if you see, because there are research papers that just keep coming out. So I um, understood the evolution of the industry and eventually understood the trends that have taken place through political, economical, competition, technological, regulatory, global, and market level lenses. And trust me, at this point in the semester, I was, I was just interpreting how much more to go. And this was just like a step into it. It's, it wasn't even near the solution. Going on into the process, you will want to understand who plays part in your entire industry. So from the primary level to the secondary level to the tertiary level, you need to assess the system to its core and eventually understand the innovations that have taken place through judging the innovation scale in each and every sec sector of your particular industry. And to me, it was more to do with customer experience. So how do I provide services that are more consumer and customer centric? That's, that's where my focus was. Going on, I built a guideline to help myself navigate my dialogues with people from the industry themselves to understand and get an insight about the industry at a much deeper level than I was understanding at that point in time. And which led me to understand the different human factors that take place or that play a part in the entire healthcare system. And eventually I created a user journey map. Now, usually a user journey map is a very tabulated format, but since I like visuals and I like showcasing information in ways it hasn't been done before, I created a cardiogram and I sort of laid down my, laid down the journey of a consumer in an emergency state through a cardiogram. 
we went on into categorizing the insights of the interactions that we had already conducted within and beyond the industry and further created affinity clusters with respect to where the responses were taking place so whether it's the service sector the chemical sector the administration department whether it's just behavioral aspect anything and everything that was related to my inferences and insights and further summarized all of it to just get an to get a direction into where i want to play a part now you know the healthcare sector involves a massive market and hence to categorize your consumers it's very difficult because that is one of the essential steps when you are designing a solution for the service and so i used behavioral lenses like panic patients or panic consumers neutral patients and calm patients or calm people who can play a part in the in the, in the particular customer journey and created three consumer personas and eventually created action statements and i came up with one that i wanted to work on which which dealt with innovation in services to address the gap between accessibility availability and efficiency of the healthcare system within a state of emergency we went into a deep diving process of ideation where you just throw your ideas without thinking and later concise and you know give them different categories whether it's training or whether it's online services or whether it's establishing a mode of service the outreach of the service itself the partnerships that can take place the and further on you go into making your ideas into concepts things that you are passionate about and not just about that but it's more like where do you want to aid this service and where, how do you want to help and contribute to it and i wanted to integrate an online platform and assist people before they are given that emergency aid service because as we all know in today's time india's population and with india's population it's very hard to get an emergency service in time and again re looked at the user journey map and as you can see the pink dot right here is where i wanted to fill the loop and henceforth i designed a service design blueprint for my solution which spoke about the physical evidence customer actions on stage contact actions backstage contact actions support processes basically anything and everything related to the solution and went on to making wireframes of the service for the application itself because i wanted it very simple since it's an emergency service i wanted it very very convenient and very efficient in that way so that the person does not have to put in too much time to get the service that they need and designed a prototype for it so ideally i use my insights my customer offering and my target group to design a solution for the healthcare system now i'm going to give you a little bit look into um what it looked like just give me a second yeah so now if you see help me as an app in which when you log into it you will either have to register then or maybe later whenever you get the service your location is identified by yourself so the only access that the computer in, in the application needs is your location which is your gps and your contact log which further on goes for you to choose the level of assistance required whether it's primary medical assistance or an or just a contact an emergency contact or an ambulance and you choose whichever you want if you connect to a co emergency contact you're just directly connected to the person through your phone logs and you're given the information needed if you need a physician or a physical assistant you're given the details of the clinic name the physician's name the physician's contact number the clinical address and if you just resort to an ambulance you are given the eta directly you're given a ambulance van number the driver's name the driver's contact and you're done so as you can see it is very brief in nature in comparison to the other applications that you might have come across and that was my aim coming to the last part of it my process throughout the semesters have evolved into three main categories to comprehend to traverse and to transpire in which i empathize i define i ideate i prototype i test and implement constantly and 
if you have any questions or anything that you want to talk about you can always reach out to me and of course ask any questions if needed thank you well, thank you so much sakshi and pragna this is i mean uh, you know just seeing it and seeing your work it makes me feel like you know i'm missing out on so much because this is so complicated yet so simple uh <laughs> I'm I'm stunned. I'm stunned. I think this is like a whole new galaxy that's opened up for so many of us. So thank you so much for sharing that with us, and thank you um, for being so patient uh, with with each one of us over here. Um, we are going to take some questions for today. Uh, I'm going to get everyone on the panel, and I'm going to spotlight each one of you. And uh, all right. So the first question that we have, um, it reads. how do you manage your student life with your social life is it too much okay so i think this is the best for uh, for sakshi and pranay if you all want to take that question how do you how do you manage your academic and your social uh, social life i feel my academic life and my social life are pretty similar in that sense cuz like you're constantly having so many interactions and stuff on your daily basis and also because eventually within the program you make friends and bonds that stay with you and so sort of your prof- your academic and your social life becomes one like that's what's happened to me and also with respect to social life i feel it's all about balance um you eventually get there it takes time i'm not kidding um but you'll get there you don't have to worry about the balance you'll get that right pragya so, you want to add but then you're coming yeah. from chennai is it yeah yeah How has that been? How has that Chennai so to Bombay? I think initially it is hard. Like I'm not gonna lie, cause it's a new place and new people and everything. The cultural differences are there. But once you get used to it, you start seeing a lot of positives. Um, like any college life, you know, you have your fun. You also have a lot of studies to do. Initially, the balance is a bit blurry. I don't think you focus a lot on education, but you slowly figure your way out, and it, it's all fine. So don't worry about it. And there are always seniors to help you out. I'd like to add that. So reaching out to seniors, reaching out to your peers is always a nice way to figure it out. And also reaching out to your teachers. I feel that teachers are more social than we are, um, which is kind of helpful in a way because they understand what you're going through. Oh, uh, that's a great one. Uh, I think Saloni Ma'am will agree with that. <laughs> so uh, the next question that we have is, uh, I think this is great for Saloni Ma'am. It says that. Uh, what is it that industry looks for when they are hiring from strategic design management as a program nice one this is for you question there and uh, nice to know that people have curiosity about that <laughs> even before joining the course so um uh, i think one of the most important skill for anyone who is practicing or learning strategic design management is to stay relevant when i say that it is about uh, it's not just about what you are being taught as a course you know that okay this semester we have to do this particular subjects it's how you're going to take it forward you know because the course will end and you would have learned a set of things there so are you demonstrating that you know say for example like in 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 the projects that you guys showed today right uh, you, you know both sachi and pradeep and by the way great work i would write you separate notes on that but yeah so uh, so you know you have learned and acquired a few skills there of how deep diving into research how looking at the entire flow of the journey and not looking at in a piecemeal way you know these are some things you have learned and the expectation is that now you have internalized it in a way so that you know when you're going out stepping out in the industry you're carrying the same attitude you're carrying the same uh, sort of inquisitiveness and you are looking at everything from a a why frame of mind you know like for example if any scenario is presented in term of you you are inquisitive enough to go and understand why is this happening why not this you know so i think staying relevant being inquisitive and the ability to talk about your work you know like i i'm saying when i say talk i i mean to say more in the sense of express about your work you know in in whatever format you are comfortable with but it's very important to have the confidence to demonstrate your work and show it and and these are even today if you feel 
you know, you don't have that. Don't worry. The beauty of the course is that as you do from, you know, you go from the beginner to the advanced level, you learn that, you acquire that skills, you you explore and, uh, you know, you let your, you expose yourself to multiple projects and multiple complexities, and then you learn that. So uh, uh, during your course, be very, very inquisitive. Try to learn as many things that you can. Uh, try exploring. Never, I would also say, don't block yourself with any domain that I want to focus just on this domain. Because the beauty is that you can collaborate, cross domain, go all over. Basically, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, you know, trying to, you know, uh, sort everything out. So that way you will remain relevant. So that, so if you're, you know, you are in the, you're working for beauty industry, Sorry, Pragya, it just came out. <laughs> you know, you, you're working today for a big beauty giant and uh, suddenly you realize I want to change and I want to step into education. Doesn't matter because, you know, you your your skills are with you. So whatever you, you know, you have, you have the same probing tendency, you have the same inquisitiveness. So keep that alive, you know, while, while you're there. So stay relevant, be inquisitive, learn more, expose yourself, read a lot and uh, be informed. That's that's more the most important thing as an SDM. <laughs> yeah. And I think, uh, um, to that, I feel I'd like to add from a student point of view as well. Um, the course grooms you yeah. in ways that you haven't like you. You wouldn't understand that right now, but I feel Pragna would resonate with me because right now, even today, when we were like looking back at our own work, completely like it didn't seem like the same person to me at least and I think a lot of other students from the course itself will also vouch for that um so you will grow you don't have to worry so much about like I understand there's a future aspect but focus on your skill set and focus on what you are passionate about and I feel that will guide you very well so, so it's very, uh, yes pregnant tell us no, I just wanted to mention that, you know, like, because you guys have the opportunity, I think you'll meet really nice professors at ISP as well. Like, at least my personal experience, and I can say for a lot of students, is that you'll meet people who are elder to you, but completely understand you probably better than you understand yourself at times. And it's a very ethereal experience, because generally you'd assume elders are a certain way and people like youth are a certain way, and that doesn't happen. So you can also communicate and voice yourself out, and people are always there to help you out. And... I think it's a very nice um, place that way. Well, that's very nice to hear actually from, from uh, each one of you. And thank you so much for, uh, for sharing these thoughts with us. Uh, the next question that we have is, um, all right, this is, I have applied to the strategic design management program at ISD. Where can I see myself after four years? And does business come as a component in this program? And how essential is it? I think Shamit, sir, you'd be, you'd be the best to answer this one. Right. Um, I think uh, some of that question was already answered in the previous, uh, uh, you know, answer as well, as Sakshi rightly mentioned that, you know, you will explore yourself as you as you move forward, right. But uh, First of all, you know, really happy and uh, happy to know that you've chosen SDM, right? Even before you've come to a design school, uh, because a lot of students uh, get to know about SDM only when they come to the design school, right? So I think this is one of the platform where which we have created to encourage that. So I think, uh, first of all, thank you on that. Um, I think when you say business, right, uh, all of us have our own way of, uh, you know, defining what a business is. Right. So don't don't get confused, you know, in terms of when you say business, it is not a it's not an MBA program. OK, it's not a batch. You know, it's not a BBA program. It's a design program which has got elements of business in it. OK. And let me explain this to you in a simple way. Uh, think about a situation when uh, product designers create a, you know, really beautiful looking chair or a really functional chair. Right. Or a communication designer creates a new logo for for a particular company. Right. The designer will get a lot of satisfaction saying that I have done a good job, right? I had a great chair, it looks really great and the client is very happy, right? But, you know, your work will not be great unless and until that chair that the product designer has designed, right, is actually selling maybe lakhs of units in the market, which the person will come to know or the company will come to know in the next two to three years. The logo that you create for a company, right, uh, the impact of that design will not be able to figure out unless and until 
यू नो पीपल स्टार्ट रिकोगनाइजिंग इट राइट टूडे यू डोंट हैव यू नो आपको येलो कलर एम दिखता है यू नो दैट्स मैकडोनल्ड्स राइट सो सो दैट इज एन सो स्ट्रेटेजिक डिजाइन इज ऑल अबाउट दैट इम्पैक्ट एंड स्ट्रेटेजिक डिजाइन इज अ पीपल हु कनेक्ट डिजाइन एंड न्यू क्रिएशन एंड इनोवेशन to the business impact so that is the business component okay it's not about looking into the excel sheets and you know getting lost in that excel sheets and looking at day to day operations it's about making design more meaningful to people and to business and to environment and to society and to galaxy uh, as saloni had touched upon so that's how i would like to go ahead yeah, i would just want to add one point here because that's a beautiful conversation yeah i just want to say that you know look at swiggy you know we all have been swigging like crazy you know in these days some of us at least and some of us had been staying to eat at home but i know some people who have been swigging a lot now the idea of swiggy is that it's not just about ordering the food right you may say that at the end of the day it is a food ordering platform and you go ahead and it gives you convenience and all sort of things there okay but what how would a strategic designer look at it is you know uh, maybe the business drive would be more in, in in you know interested in knowing the revenue the analytics the financials you know how is swiggy's market growing how it is diversifying itself is may e-commerce be dalding grocery be dalding you know all those things would be you know because we have the supply chain we have the operations and all that right now that part of the world i feel is kind of fairly standard because the business has kind of matured there and we know there is a model around it what is more interesting from a strategic design perspective is to know why people order a specific meal at a particular time of the day or let's say if you know saloni is a swiggy customer what does saloni's week look like and can we based on that information show saloni more relevant in food items which she is likely to order which is going to result in a business so it's not just about that transaction that happens you know it's not there the business person one who is coming from that business for them the most important touch point is fact order cart mein money aaya ya nahi but for a strategic designer where does the decision happens so the decision so if saloni is going to swiggy it's very weird to talk about yourself in third person but if i'm going to you know a place and order there will be lot of things which will influence me because if i'm ordering a dinner is it for me or for my family or for my friends or for someone special is it going to be you know what have have i eaten in the day that's going to influence what i what will i eat in dinner you know things like that so time of the day what is in my budget what kind of a mood i am in what kind of me so all that plus the business is of interest for the strategic designer you know because if you do not understand the back story you're not going to influence how the transaction happens so i'm just trying to give you a sense here that it is broader and it is uh, much more layered and that much more fun and interesting to 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 look at it like businesses which we know businesses which we use every day in and out so the class now swiggy is my favorite example for multiple multiple reasons <laughs> but uh is it's it's just that i just wanted to bring that perspective to give you something that maybe you use on a very uh, day to day day life yeah uh one one great. last point uh, i would i would recommend all of you to read a book called change by design by tim brown i think that's a must read by for every student uh, even before you are in a design school i think that's a great read irrespective of whether you are an sdm student or a product design student or a fashion design student okay but if you read this book change by design by tim brown uh, you know you will understand that design is not just about beautifying objects right it is there is so much more to it right design is about transformation right design design is about making that change happen in the organization in people in culture in society and stuff like that so uh, highly recommended i think um, you know something for you to probably go and check it out on amazon after you leave this meeting uh change by design by tim brown okay okay krish yes i think that's again very rightly put by by each one of you thank you so much there's one more question this is the last question that we're taking uh this is from ayan ayan says that uh, strategic design gives me a whole feeling of business studies rather than design what are the designing aspects of this course okay i'll let students answer this 
I feel we have received this like so much um in like just like a few times that I've spoken to freshmen as well um when you talk about a business as well you're putting in every aspect that goes in it together and design is also about functionality it's not just about the creative process that goes into it so to me even if you say it's a business design and ideally people say that but it's more to do with using both your abilities like sir has already answered that you know using your creative creative skill and you will discover your own creative skill i'm not saying that everyone has this one visual skill that they want to showcase it's not that everyone has a different creative skill like for example pragna right here she can execute her ideas creatively so well which i still am in- intrigued with so it's not just about designing the business but it's also designing your own thought process eventually as to how you want to work creatively if that makes sense um also ayan i just want to mention you're like the only one who put the video on the through the entire session so really nice on that but i think saloni ma'am in one of her previous presentations she talked about how you try to design anything and everything from an excel sheet for like uh, i think mom you mentioned this how you tried designing an excel sheet how you tried designing for you know a friend's party how you tried designing your own posters your own infographics and i think even in the presentations that you saw even in the presentation that shamit sir shared is a lot of like design that's to do there right so it's your interpretation of design uh, i think even when you reach change by design you'll understand design is taken literally as art but when you start exploring the concept of design it's it's very very wide to understand that anything and everything is design for example the zoom interface that you're probably seeing us now is also design and <laughs> so is everything so yeah and just one more thing design is simplicity it's not complexity so if you are able to simplify something very complex you are a designer in truth if you if you go that way and it's not just about you parsing an excel sheet it's about how you do it and how you express that i feel expression is something that saloni ma'am has like imprinted in our brains like no you have to express and i feel because of that we've we've come out of the zone of not speaking about our design and you know just just expressing what we are feeling while looking at it and i feel that ex- that sort of speaks for itself um so yeah that yeah i i'll just give an academic answer to that i think uh, uh, we'll put uh, sakshi and pragya so ayan i think let me just simplify this for you you know every semester you are going to have five courses sorry guys can you hear me sorry sorry i think i yeah now you can hear me okay so every semester you're going to do five courses right out of those five there will be one course which will be connected to either marketing or management or to finance or to business models right which will be right so the remaining four courses that you're going to do every semester is going to be around design information visualization creative teams right uh, business design service design uh, right systems thinking a lot of those okay so i think in simple way that is what i can tell you right so consider it to be 20% business management uh, theories but 80% is still about creativity innovation and design does that help ayan is that is that fine and i think good that we are able to see you so that yes, you know sir. we get a confirmation yes, of yeah. yeah thank you so much thank you well that's great then thank you so much uh, this was the last of our questions thank you so much to everyone for being a part of this call saloni ma'am the students shamit sir everyone for being a part of this call and uh, you know clarifying all our doubts related to strategic design management I hope everyone's questions are answered. If your questions are not answered, we'd be happy to take them on offline as well. You can reach out to us on our Instagram channel, on our website, wherever convenient to you, and we'd be happy to take these questions. Um with that, I think this is the end of the Friday evening session we had planned for y'all. Thank you so much everyone for being a part of this. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you Prish. Absolutely. Thank you Saloni. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you Pragya. Thank you Freya as well. I can see her and Yeah, hi Freya. Hi Freya. <laughs> thank you sir. Yeah, thank you guys. See you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.